Good morning. Happy New Year. Hope everyone had a lovely evening last night, and I hope you're having a lovely New Year's Day. The uh, day has not dawned because it's later now, but um, it's very, very windy and very cold here at the edge of the earth um, in western New Mexico. So I will be staying inside and actually off today, which I'm going to enjoy the heck out of because I haven't had many days off lately. So I'm going to remain in jammies and just hang, I think, today, do a little bit of reading and whatever. But I wanted to remake a video and I wanted to talk a little bit about um, my channel and the video and some other things um, today. My apologies for the video that I uploaded yesterday. I was very, very frustrated. I should not have uploaded it. I have deleted it. Um, that was really, those were really not the things I wanted to say. Um, and I have a couple things to say about that if you happen to watch it. Um, in, with regard to reading and my kids, I, I need to say something. I sometimes get very frustrated with them, like we all do with our kids, but you have to know that my kids are my life. They're the two halves of my heart, the reason I breathe, the reason I live. Um, and I don't begrudge them any moment I've ever spent with them, ever. I'm grateful for every single second. I'm grateful that my kids are healthy, that they're bright, that they're capable, that they're talented. And um, yes, sometimes I get frustrated that I can't read as much as I would like to, but one day they'll be out of my house and I'll have plenty of time to read. And um, if that doesn't just break my heart and kill me when they leave, then I'll have lots of time to read. Anyway, 2014, I'm very excited by this year and I have some things going on. Um, I also want to talk to you a little bit about what's going to happen here on my channel here on YouTube. Um, and just say a couple things about that. I'm going to be removing some videos because I think that they have struck a negative chord that I didn't intend them to strike. Um, I can sometimes have a fairly dry sense of humor, and sometimes people don't appreciate that. They don't get it, um, and if they don't get it, then they tend to take offense at things that I've said, and they weren't intended that way. I made a video a couple months ago, I don't know, three months ago, something, I don't know what the date was, anyway, about um, cloth pads versus disposable pads. Um, this video wasn't for everybody, and I had some really nice comments and some people who really understood the point I was trying to make, and then I have had some really, really hateful, ugly comments, and it's the first time I've really experienced any of the ugliness on YouTube. So I'm just going to delete the video and get rid of it, but there's something that I wanted to say that that was the point to that video. I want to make the point here, because I don't think that people understood. My point in making that video was that it's important that you think for yourself. It's important that you do not let people bully you or shame you into choices that are not right for you. My point was that cloth pads may not always be the right choice. I don't care what people say about disposable pads and how horrible they are and all those things. It's like the women who tell you when you have newborns that of course you can breastfeed because everybody can breastfeed. It's not a problem. That's just a lie and you need to look at it for the lie that it is because it's not right for every woman at every time in her life, okay? And not, it's, take the time to think for yourself and do not let people bully you or shame you into a choice that is not right for you. I tell my kids that all the time with their life and I'm going to read you a quote from someone who at the end of his life said one of the most magnificent things I've ever heard anyone say. Um, he's one of my absolute heroes. Um, whether you think of him good, bad, or indifferent, it really it doesn't matter because I adored him and I still do. Um, and thankfully he can live on um, through videos and books and things. But it's by Christopher Hitchens. And he said something to um, a child at the end of his life. It was in a speech that he gave and then he was talking to uh, children at the end and he said, take the risk of thinking for yourself. Much more happiness, truth, beauty, and wisdom will come to you that way. That was the point I was trying to make. Part of what I said was kind of tongue-in-cheek. People apparently don't get your dry humor. They, people these days are in a very big hurry to get offended. A really big hurry to be offended. Like it's their right to be offended. Um, and I have oh, probably a whole lot of stuff to say about that, but I won't today, and it's really not important. And the reality is that I don't make videos on here important enough to argue with people about. I just don't. No, no topic that I discuss on here is important enough to argue with people about or to read through crappy comments. Life is just too short and I deal with enough on a daily basis to not have to do that here on my channel on YouTube. Um, so anyway, I'm going to take down a couple of videos and um, you know, I don't think it's anything anybody's going to miss. So 
I'll be doing that today. And then I wanted to discuss reading. And the whole point of making the video that I tried to make yesterday was talking about 2014 and reading. And I'm really excited by this because I have all my life, or most of my life, been a heavy-duty reader. Not as much now since I had children um, for a variety of reasons. And those of you who have children understand that. But I wanted to... One of the things that I've always regretted not doing is making a list of all the books that I had read, because there must be countless, and I think how neat it would be to be able to go back and look at the books that you've read during the year. So this year, I'm going to make a list, and I'm going to read some things with some purpose. I'm going to choose to read some things. 2014 for me is all about choosing to be happy, regardless of the circumstances. So with my reading, I'm also choosing happy reading. I'm not going to, that doesn't mean that I'll never read anything that has a little heavier theme, but I'm not going to read anything that's super dark and super heavy and depressing. Um, these are the topics that are off limits, child abuse in any way, shape, or form. I don't know if I've ever discussed what I do, but I see that on a consistent daily basis, and I'm not going to read about it in fiction. No. Torture in any way, shape, or form. Never liked it, never going to enjoy a story that... that contains any form of that. Um, just abuse of any way. You know, I read not so that I can add more misery to my life. I read so that I can sort of, not escape, but sort of in a sense it is, right? Reading is a little bit of an escapism um, mechanism in a sense. And um, I really enjoy things like fantasy, even when they have darker themes, like Tolkien's books. There are darker themes in that, but I've really enjoyed it. Um, and so the reading this year is all about joy, and because of that, the genre or age group that I've chosen to read from that I'm making the plan for is young adult fiction um, for a variety of reasons. There is a huge array of um, genre choices within the category of young adult. Um, and I think that primarily they consider young adult somewhere in the neighborhood of ages between 14 and 18, 19, 20, something like that. I'm way, way out of the age range by an entire generation. Um, but I really got to enjoying young adult fiction when I worked as a substitute teacher. I used to work at the junior high a lot. And the librarian there was very, very kind, and she used to let me check out books. And what I found was just this huge array of wonderful authors and beautiful books and um, I remember I read The Higher Power of Lucky and if you haven't read that book you should it's just a lovely little book um, and that was just one among dozens of really excellent books I read and I enjoyed every single one and within young adult fiction there's a whole there's separate genres there's dystopian and that that's one of the only places that I think you can find interesting dystopian um, that's not like George Orwell or um, what Aldous Huxley or something I you know like I said I don't want to be depressed um, I want to enjoy it um, so you know there's dystopian there's fantasy there's paranormal normal there's sci-fi there's um, contemporary there's so I'm really excited by it um, and I made a plan uh, I finally decided that I could probably competently or comfortably complete five books a month, both financially and time-wise, um, particularly young adult fiction. Now, that doesn't include reading other things because I want to, like um, books about spirituality or other classics that I'm already reading or um, things like that. Um, I am right now still trying to get through the two towers. I'm almost there, but I swear the longer, the more I read, the longer this book gets. It's driving me nuts. I cannot wait to get done with it. Um, oh, this is not the best of the three. It's Tolkien, so it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm having a hard time. So I'm going to finish that, and I'm going to start the third one. I'm going to pick that up next time I go to Albuquerque. Um, I would order it online, but I want the same. I want the edition to match. I'm not really stuck on paperback versus hardcover, but when I have a series, I like the edition books to match, so um, I can't find it online. Um, so five young adult books per month. Um, and I think that if I choose them right, it's something that my kids can be reading as well. They're both 12. And so, and they're mature, mature 12 year olds. And I don't mean, they're mature for their age. And I think that if I choose right, there are things that they can read that I would be okay with them reading. 
So it's something that we can share at this point too, which is cool. So um, I'm not buying, you know, 60 books just for myself to enjoy, although, you know, that's certainly allowed. But so I've chosen the first five for January. And then in January, I'll make another video about how that went and choose the next five for February. Um, and I'm going to soldier on and I'm going to get through this. And even if I get to June and I'm very frustrated with the project, whatever, I'm going to carry it out throughout the year. And at the least, I will have read 60 books. And reading is good. So these are the five that I have chosen for January. I will try to get the Amazon links for you down here. My, I have a Mac and the trackpad has um, the clicky bit of the trackpad no longer works. And so I have a real hard time cutting and pasting. So I will attempt to get them for you here. If not, they can all be found on Amazon. And I'm going to give you the title and the author. So you can Google those or you can look on Amazon. Um, and I buy pri my books primarily from Amazon because of prices, number one. And number two, I live about 100 miles away from the closest bookstore. And I'm not in Albuquerque all that often. So, you know, I have to get them online somewhere. The first one is Etiquette and Espionage by Gail Carriger. The second is Across the Universe by Beth Revis. The third is Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. The fourth is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. And the fifth one is Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea by April Genevieve Tuchoki. And I'm probably absolutely butchering her last name, but if you just type in, if I forget to do the links or I can't do them, if you'll just type in Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea, that's the title of it. And one is sci-fi, a couple are um, fantasy, one is more of a contemporary, Beauty Queens is more of a contemporary. Um, and I read, I'll read most any genre, but I prefer things like um, paranormal, although I'm getting really, really sick of vampires. I'm not, I'm just not into vampires particularly, but I like the more uh, paranormal fantasy type stuff. But I also enjoy a sci-fi if it's a good one. Um, I'm not as fond of contemporary because, again, I'm not reading to talk about life as it is. I'm reading to enjoy myself, kind of step away from that life a little bit. And I see a lot of reality every day about really ugly, ugly things. So um, anyway, those are the five. So that's what's going to happen reading-wise. Um, um, as it goes on, I'm going to link for you some really lovely young ladies um, that I have found on YouTube who do book reviews. Um, they do interesting to be read, I mean readers, so these girls, these young ladies are girls, I shouldn't say that, I'm, I don't mean to be as gender biased as I find myself, but, and I'm not really in real life, so I, I don't, I hate, I shouldn't say things like that, anyway, um, some lovely young ladies who, uh, like I said, review a young adult, um, books and, um, talk about them and, um, have, bookshelves that are just so admirable and just so exciting but um, as we go on I'll link those here for you because there are about four or five of them that I found um, through a friend on Facebook and Twitter and then you know how things you find one link and then it just kind of snowballs and that's how this has happened and so I'll get that together and present it and one time I don't have all that together pardon me for you right now to present it to you in a cohesive way but I will as we go on um, and then very quickly I wanted to talk about planners and notebooks um, I will do a planner video as soon as the new stuff comes in. I actually ordered a planner insert for my Midori um, that I plan at this point to use as my main planner for the year, but I had it custom made via Etsy, so it's not here yet. And I'm also doing the Documented Life Project on Facebook, um, and I highly recommend that if you're interested. Check it out on Facebook. It's called the Documented Life Project. Um, and so I'll be getting a Moleskina for that, but that has to wait until payday for me to order it along with these books. So I'm running a little bit behind, but it's all good. Um, I'm learning to try to have a little bit of peace about things and not be so frantic as well. And so it, it's all good. So I'll have a planner video for you. Um, I started a new notebook. I wasn't actually finished with the other one, the Piccadilly that I talked about a couple weeks ago in a video, but I'm going to go ahead and just start a new one for the new year. I shelved that. Um, there was not anything in it, with the exception of a um, Zentangle that I wanted to keep that I needed to pull out. So there were not any lists or anything like that um, that I felt like I needed to move over to this notebook. Um, 
so there were just some things that I wanted to keep in mind. Um, the Zen Doodle that I didn't want to leave out. And that actually has some quotes, so I lied. I tore, I tore one page out of the notebook to put in this notebook, and I just put it in with some washi tape. Um, and this is a Quovatis Habana. So it's a little bit larger, and I love, love, love the size. These were just some stickers that I had. Um, the cover's flexible, which I really love. And these Habana notebooks are just a shiz, y'all. Um, they lie flat really, really nicely. So they just open, and it doesn't matter where you open the, the spine. And, you know, you do a little hand press on that, and it just... It will open on the table. It will stay open if it's something that you're working on. Um, I love the size. I'm not super fond about the color of the paper. It's a little bit more yellow than I would like, and the lines are the spacing I would like a little bit larger. But the size of the notebook and the paper and the cover and the fact that it lies open so well just make it a really lovely notebook. So that's what I'm going to be using for my just everyday notebook that I keep the notes and lists and I talked about that in a previous video uh, you know a couple weeks ago so that's what's up with that um, I don't think there's anything else particularly new and exciting um, I am still working with my Mary L tarot which I absolutely adore I have not touched any of my other tarot decks no I shouldn't say that I haven't done any readings with any of my other decks since I got that I went through and did some comparative um, with that tarot to kind of look at some symbolism and different ways that Marie White has expressed symbolism within that deck, but I haven't done, I haven't used another deck since I got it. I absolutely adore it. And that's all that's going on today. Probably a whole lot of just resting and a whole lot of nothing. So I hope your day is lovely. I hope you've had a wonderful New Year's Eve and blessings for a just delightful, productive, joyful 2014. That's all I have right now. I will talk to you soon. Thanks.